again, it's a great privilege to be here. And on behalf of Light Health Baptist Church and Pastor Buchning, thank you for the opportunity. I saw your pastor down at Men's for Christ, and we were talking about the possibility. He says, you know, if something might work out good for you and good for me. And he was thinking about this Sunday and uh, said, uh, I got a Sunday. I, I want to be out of the pulpit, but I need somebody to be there. So I said, well, yeah, I think it'll work out. So uh, uh, he's where he is, and I'm here, and you're there, and it's all good, amen? It, it's all good. It's good to be, you know, as we travel, my wife and I were finishing up our seventh year traveling for a New Testament association. I also pastor full-time. I'm not sure how that really sounds, but uh, over at Baldwin, Wisconsin, Faith Baptist Church, is, and I, I keep thinking of Nelson, but it's Munson. And, and uh, because uh, I knew her when she was young and still is young, <laughs> younger, all right? Uh, so uh, anyway, um, it's, it's good to, to see families and look forward to, to seeing uh, Becky and Kurt again. And family, like, like I said, last time I saw them, they were younger. And so you got to make that adjustment in your mind, you know, it's been a while. And then the Hansons, we've known them for years and years, and they still talk to us. Amen. <laughs> we appreciate that. So, uh, you know, as we travel, it's really interesting, if you just give me a few minutes to reminisce here, how uh, we, we connect. We were out in, in Wyoming, and there was a couple that had attended church out there who used to be my Sunday school teachers back up at Milltown, Wisconsin. And it's just a, a remarkable and a blessing and encouragement to know that we're never far from people we know. And, of course, in the Lord, uh, we do love one another, and we do love the Lord, and we have that common bond. And so uh, it's, uh, it's great to be with you uh, this morning. Uh, the, the theme with your music, unfortunately, is not the same as what I'm going to be preaching on, and I'm not sure how that came about, but uh, we'll, we'll get through the morning uh, anyway. Uh, you may be here this morning on a more serious note now. You may be here this morning. Maybe God has drawn you to Lighthouse Baptist Church. Maybe someone's been witnessing to you. Maybe you picked up a tract. Maybe you've been listening to radio or TV. And God has drawn you here because I don't know who you are. I have no idea who you are. Whether you come faithfully or maybe visiting this morning or you might be from out of town and in town for graduation and come to a good Bible preaching church. Uh, I'm not going to be gospel preaching this morning. And so if God has led you here and you come with a desire to make a decision for the Lord, it might be salvation. It might be baptism. It might be church membership. Maybe there's a young family who wants to dedicate a child, and you came with that intent to do that, and you're sitting out there and saying, Pastor's not here. How am I going to do that? Well, you do it anyway, okay? You keep that decision. You, you make it a point that no matter what you hear this morning, you're going to follow through on that because that's what God wants you to do. Amen? That's what God wants you to do. And so you do it. There will be uh, uh, folks of, of Lighthouse who will be happy to come and, and, and help you out and, and uh, uh, work with you and, and uh, you, you know, uh, do what, whatever needs to be done. So don't let me interfere with what God has for you to do. Because my message is more informational this morning and not really a, a message that's going to, to have you jump out of your seat and come down the aisle, you know. Uh, that's just not where it is this morning. Because I get one opportunity and uh, to challenge you to think about why does Lighthouse belong to maybe the MBA? Can, no, yes, yes. No, MBA, Minnesota Baptist Association. Uh, as we're talking about this morning, New Testament Association and uh, maybe the Twin City Association with your pastor. And, you know, I, I thought about that as a pastor. Okay, uh, I believe in those things. Uh, we have a, a good, uh, what we call Northwest Wisconsin uh, Fellowship and 
And I'm glad you didn't close the borders this morning and you let me come across. I really appreciate that. Took the back roads just to make sure we'd make it, but we we'll appreciate that. But we have a good fellowship up in what we call the northwest area of uh, Wisconsin. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a pastor's fellowship. And, and then uh, uh, Faith Baptist, uh, Baldwin, uh, belongs to the Wisconsin Fellowship of Baptist Churches. So it's a state uh, fellowship as well of churches and pastors, and then uh, the MTA. So obviously, I believe in that. I believe it's important. I believe there's great benefit with it. But when's the last time someone said, why? Why should you, why should Lighthouse, why should Pastor Buchney be interested in, th in this local church that he pastors being a part of uh, these associations or affiliations or fellowships or whatever they may be. So that's uh, my intent today is, is to inform you and encourage you because I believe they're good, they're valuable, uh, they're necessary as the DVD uh, pointed out. Uh, there, there's good benefits to that. And so one more time before we get into what we really want to say, there is a display in the back, as any good missionary uh, will do. And there's information back there. There's a brochure uh, about the NTA that I would encourage you to pick up and take with you. There's some prayer cards. We have a prayer card of the uh, family that we're supporting out there in Williston, North Dakota. The Poos went out there a couple years ago and started uh, Bakken Baptist Church. And uh, then I have done a remarkable job out there uh, with the strength and the goodness of the Lord to get a uh, fundamental Baptist church started on a very difficult mission field, the oil field, the Bakken, uh, the, the Bakken oil fields in Williston, North Dakota. Difficult because of schedules. Difficult because of, of, of the uh, climate out there. Difficult because really the culture out there uh, or, or the tough culture. And uh, <clears throat> like they said, it was kind of like the, the fr frontier days of America where you had a lot of men and a few women. I don't want that to come across wrong, uh, but sometimes that creates its own set of circumstances and difficulties. And, and so uh, they've done a, a tremendous job out there. They have chartered Bakken Baptist Church and and they couldn't even find a place for the first few years they were there. They could not even find one place where they could hold all their services. They'd meet in one place in the morning, another place in the evening, and yet a third place on a Wednesday night. How do you build a church like that? Somebody says, well, I think I want to go there. So they go where they meet on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and they're not there. What's your first thought? Hey, they don't exist. They don't exist. Or maybe they had a Wednesday night free and so they, they found out where it was Wednesday night and then another time they might have had a Sunday morning free and, and thought, well, I'll go where I went Wednesday night and they're not there. So these are the circumstances that usually a new church face. Now, I don't know the history of Lighthouse Baptist Church. I, I don't know how long you've been in existence, but I know that I believe Pastor Buchner has been about your only pastor. Is that correct? So I am a little bit familiar with it. But I'm sure in those early days, met there, met here, until God gave the land and the sides of congregation to, to build this beautiful building and have this beautiful setting. So uh, the history of the church is probably similar to, to most churches that have started. So there's information out there. There's a prayer card if you'd like to pick it up and invite you to stop by. And uh, if you are getting low on on energy uh, and on chocolate. Uh, there's some treats back there. So uh, make sure uh, you do that too. And parents, uh, it's between you and your child how much they take, okay? We, we, don't, we don't restrict that. Uh, sometimes I watch kids and they'll look at me and they'll take one and then they circle around and they come back and I'm still standing there supposedly talking to somebody and they take another one and they look at me and I look at them and you know, it's your conscience, young man. It, it's your, you, you know, it's between you and the Lord and you and your parents. So, uh, but it's back there, and uh, uh, we we want you to to be able to enjoy that. Laborers together is really the theme of the message this morning, 
And that's what the NTA and uh, state associations, fellowships, uh, so forth. Now, let me just uh, clarify something here. We are not a convention. The NTA is not a convention. The NTA is not a conference. Those terms in time past have kind of left a sour note, a sour taste with many pastors because convention and conferences sometimes convey the idea that they own. And, uh, uh, and that's unfortunately been true uh, over the brief history uh, in, in North America. Uh, where uh, it started out with uh, the old Northern Baptist Convention that changed their name to American Baptist Convention in the 50s. And then uh, a little later, uh, the uh, Conservative Baptist uh, Fellowship or Conference or, or Convention. And, and unfortunately, when uh, churches were starting and they didn't have the money to necessarily put up to maybe buy a track of land, they would bower uh, from the mother organization, but the mother organization would then take the deed. And later on, when the church would say, well, you know, we're, we're big enough now, we're, God is blessed, and we've grown, and, and, and uh, uh, we, we like, we, we like our, 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 our deed, and they say, sorry, that's ours. And it has caused, it has caused some, some real concerns over the years. The NTA is not that. We have put it right in our Constitution that I am not here to tell Lighthouse how to operate as Lighthouse or to tell your pastor. So we do not interfere at all with the local church. We ask your fellowship. We ask for uh, uh, your participation. So I just want to clarify that if I could. Let's turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as we'll be using the illustration there of the body with our message this morning. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now seriously, where is, is uh, Pastor Josh up here? All right, sir, when are we supposed to be done? Around 11? Around 11. So that could be... 11.30, quarter to 12. I got it. It says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, as we uh, consider labors together of, of the body here, and, and it says there in uh, verses 12, uh, for as a body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. If you go down to verse 14, please, 1 Corinthians 12. For the body is not one member, but many. And then again <clears throat> to verse 20. But now are they many members, yet but one body. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for the privilege to be here. We pray, Lord, for Pastor Buchney. As, uh, Lord, the, perhaps a service for graduation has started. We don't know the timetable. But we pray as he's had the opportunity to mingle with the uh, graduates of, uh, of the school there. And, and Lord, uh, reacquaint and, and visit with those he has come to know over the years. That Father, he's been able to slip a track into their hand. Maybe have a word of prayer with them. Maybe, Lord, to just shake their hand. Whatever. Whatever the Spirit of God has led him to do, we thank you for that. And Lord, we, we sometimes don't see that fruit right now. But Lord, down the road, it may be as these young men and women uh, enter into the responsibility of parenthood and enter into, Lord, a, a more responsible uh, segment of, of life, that, that their hearts and minds by the Spirit of God might be turned back to those high school days when there was a pastor and a church that cared for them. Lord, we pray you'll use that. For the fruit does not always come in the season we think of it, but the fruit will come because that's your promise. We thank you, Lord, for the testimony of Lighthouse Baptist Church. Who, was, who knew for sure what would happen way back when, when perhaps that Bible study started or that uh, handful of families uh, met for the first time? 
Who knew whether there would be a church? But Lord, you have seen fit to, to bring about Lighthouse and, and uh, its testimony and its outreach and souls that are saved and lives that have been changed and, 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 and uh, uh, those that went on in, in, into ministry. So we thank you for that. And we thank you, Lord, that today that uh, a church does not need to stand alone. A pastor doesn't need to feel that he is the only tree out in, in, the, uh, uh, in the prairie. But that, Lord, uh, you have given us uh, uh, many opportunities locally and statewide and nationally for churches and pastors to identify and fellowship and uh, work together. And so we pray you will give so in, insight, thoughtfulness, and, and Lord, uh, direct us accordingly. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we think of this idea of an association of churches, it's much like, if you would, Lighthouse Baptist Church. You're a variety of people, uh, different families, different backgrounds, different interests. I try to stay away from the, the sports arena, and definitely I stay away from the political uh, when I'm in a church. But sometimes somebody brought up the Packers. I didn't bring them up, but I'm not going there. But, you know, we have different interests. We, we, you know, some like to fish. I'm not a fisherman. I'm not against it. I, I just don't do it, you know. I, some like to hunt. I, I've never really got, in, got into hunting. Now, if you want to mow lawn, I'm there. I love mowing lawn. I, I do a garden, but, but I struggle with, uh, you know, sometimes the weeds just uh, have an attitude of their own. And, and so uh, I, I don't mind uh, uh, gardening. Um, we, we have different interests, but you still come together. So are there all kinds of little lighthouse Baptist churches out there? No, you're one. Different names, different backgrounds, different ages, different interests. I could sit down with some of you and talk sports and have a good time. Others would say, can we talk about something else? I could maybe sit down and talk about economics with some of you. You're into that. You like that. And, and others would say, uh, nice meeting you, Pastor Thompson. But that's not my conversation, you know. But you're one. And, and that's what I really want to bring across to you as we think of a national association of churches. It, it, it operates as one though we're scattered across America. Uh, we, we have find, found somewhat of a fruitful field out in California. Uh, California is California. You know, anybody here from California? I may have to change my message. <laughs> anybody from California? <laughs> uh, but we're finding a, a need out there because churches can meet the state requirements except one. Do you have your 501c3 status? And they say, well, uh, no. And a church can get that, but it's, it's a lot of paperwork to do it individually as a church. But when they come in with the NTA, uh, they're automatically under the 501c3, as you heard on the DVD, uh, if you remember that, that, uh, uh, that they come in... Uh, under the, the larger group, if you would. And, and so it's very easy, but it's very important. And I'm finding that as I serve churches, that this is becoming a, a, a very vital and important area for churches. And, and I find that some with Christian schools, and, and particularly in Minnesota, I don't know if you're a part of it, but to give to the max day. Brother Hanson, when I first heard that, I thought they were supporting the pastor up there. You know, give to the max. Why would you give to an individual? <laughs> okay, figure it out later. But uh, I don't know if you do that or not. But there are some churches in Minnesota that is important to them. They have ministries. Some have Christian day schools. Some have other ministries. That's important to them. And the government looks at them and say, are you 501c3? Uh, recognize and uh, if, if they're not then, then they can't participate or they can't get the benefits I, I should say and, and so I'm finding that, 
that uh, across the nation, uh, this, this is uh, becoming very important. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's a blessing to be able to do that. I, I get a word, uh, uh, let's just, for instance, uh, Lighthouse Baptist Church decides you're going to expand your camping uh, opportunities, and I know you do some of that. And uh, you, you say, we're going to buy this campground and, and, and so forth and so on, but, but uh, uh, we're, we're running into problems here, and, and especially with 501c3. And so Pastor Butney gets hold of Pastor Thompson and says, uh, what can you do for us? And all I simply do is send a letter to whomsoever it may concern that Lighthouse Baptist Church became associated with the NTA in 1989 and is in good standing with the NTA. And then I enclose a letter that we got from the, N from the IRS way back when the NTA uh, made application as an association. And I have found that that has not yet failed. A simple letter on behalf of the church or and then enclosing the letter from the IRS with our name and the year of application and our various numbers, it has yet to fail to meet the qualification. That, folks, is huge in a very simple way. And maybe someday that might be what you might need. But you see, as a part of the NTA, you're helping those other churches, those other or, uh, uh, affiliations with churches achieve that because if it wasn't for churches making up the NTA, it wouldn't exist. And I don't know where these churches would turn to because there's only a, a, a few church associations out there. There's many pastor fellowships out there. But the IRS does not recognize pastor fellowships with the IRS. It needs to be local churches. And so there, there's only a few national associations out there. So it's huge. And you may say, well, that's good for them. But it wasn't for churches like you making up the NTA. It wouldn't happen. So every time I send a letter, you're a part of that. You know, it's like that missionary that says, you know, you can't go to whatever field it may be, but you're with me and every decision that's made there, you're a part of that decision. And so every help we can give, every encouragement we can give, you're a part of that. And so it is vital. It was also mentioned about the chaplains, if you remember uh, Leslie, uh, was our first uh, full-time chaplain. He had a tour of duty in uh, um, Iraq as well as Afghanistan. And uh, that, that's the one exception that the military gives. You know, usually if a commanding officer, whatever he might be, from sergeant on up or private on up, you know, if he gives a command, you do it. Now, I have no military background. So unfortunately, I cannot speak by experience, but I've shared this and I've had some response to it. But usually when the order is given, you do it. Well, with the chaplain, especially with fundamental chaplains who may be asked to do an infant baptism, shall we say, or they may ask to, be, to, to do a communion to a, a, a mixed multitude, the chaplain can si simply say to his commanding officer, whether it's a, a higher chaplain or, or maybe someone else, sir, uh, my endorsing agency does not permit me to do that. And I've, I've talked, like I said, to other military people, and they say, that doesn't exist in the military. It does under the chaplaincy. And this is something we need to pray for because a few years ago, we were concerned that we were going to lose that. As you remember how government was within the last couple years. And there was great concern that that, that would be lost, but... Uh, uh, we haven't yet. And, and so as particularly independent, fundamental, Baptist, and, and there's others out there. Uh, we're not exclusive with that. But as they serve in the military, uh, having a strong endorsing agency supporting them, like 
If you remember it on a DVD, the chaplain says it takes a huge load off them. And it does. Because they don't have to go face to face with a commanding officer. They can simply say, my agency does not permit me to do that. And what he's saying is the churches I represent don't do this. Don't baptize infants. Don't, you know, have this broad-mindedness about the... Everybody is the same, you know, and there's many ways to God and, and, and all, all, all the rest. So, uh, again, uh, as our chaplain serve, uh, we, we have one full-time chaplain now stationed down in Texas. We have a, a National Guard chaplain uh, in Wisconsin and a Montana Air National Guard out in Mon- Montana. Uh, we have a, a Wyoming National Guard chaplain that's just about ready to, uh, to come on board. Uh, in Minnesota here, you, there's a chaplain that serves uh, the uh, Civil Air Patrol uh, in the Burnsville area. And, and then you have a chaplain that uh, ministers in the uh, VA hospital, St. Paul, Minneapolis, uh, wherever that is over there. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, we, we encourage them. We support them. And uh, it is a, it's a vital asset to them. So this is something that only... National Association of Churches. But you see, we're working together. One body, one organization, one association made up of many churches, from California to to New York. Uh, We don't have a lot on the East Coast, but we have a few scattered here and there. Uh, From Minnesota uh, to uh, Arizona, uh, our our biggest concentration of churches, just to let you know, is found in in the upper Midwest, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and and Illinois. make up a, a large segment of uh, churches within the NTA. So some things can only happen uh, through uh, a, a group of churches uh, working together. Therefore, we, we need to labor together. And, and uh, you, you may say, well, you, you know, I'm still not sure this, this is what we, we, what we should be doing. Well, if not you, then who? <laughs> You know, what would have happened to Lighthouse Baptist Church? And again, I don't know your history, but what would have happened if years ago, and I don't know if it started out with a Bible study group or a or, or group of people, what, well, but let's just say, what would have happened if they would have said, not us? We don't want the struggles. We don't want the sacrifice. Uh, maybe a family with two or three kids, and they looked around, and the rest were all like me, you, you know, old duffers, and they said, uh, not us. We, we want somebody with kids. We want a church with a ministry. We want this. And, and, and maybe they said, Where, where's the choir? Well, we, we're not ready for a choir yet. Uh, not us. What would happen? May not have been a Lighthouse Baptist Church. But somebody says, we, me, us, we'll do it. We're willing. We believe this is what God would have us to do. We need that same mindset uh, with uh, local churches reaching out and helping local churches. Appreciate those that uh, uh, were, were first involved. The NTA started back in 1966. It came out of the old uh, um, conservative uh, uh, Baptist Association or convention and uh, uh, started in 1966, started with 28 churches that came together that time, and, and that was a sacrificial time. They, they had big plans, but things didn't quite work out as well as they thought. But they stayed with it, and uh, today we have about 120 churches. No, it's not been huge growth, because we, we have history that, that we've got to deal with. And uh, uh, there, there, there's other things out there, but appreciate the growth that God has given. And uh, interest is out there. I appreciate being able to work with a number of different pastors and churches in different areas. But we're still one. We're not fragmented. I want to say to you that uh, the NTA, we've been 50 years now, 51 years, 52 years. We're right where we are when we started. I mean, we still hold the same doctrine. Uh, We still support the same principles. Uh, We hold to the same practices. And I believe that's a great blessing of God. 
And, and so uh, we, uh, we, we haven't moved. And, and I, I, I get a number of publications, and sadly I, I see where, where they're beginning to move. They're beginning to shift to, to the left on, on some doctrinal issues and some other practices. And, and it's sad to see that. But uh, so far, uh, God has, has helped the NTA to, to stay with the old pathway and, and to, to minister in, in, in how we start. So uh, we need to be uh, laborers uh, together. Uh, just as you labor together, and uh, some of you do one thing, some do another, uh, some just come and, and you're here. You know, I, I don't... Maybe you feel that's important, maybe you don't. But let me say as another pastor, sometimes that is just what God wants you to do. You may, you may say, well, I, I wish I could. I have a man in my church that says, Pastor, I will not get up in front. I will not teach. Wow, what an attitude. <laughs> but he says, Pastor, if you need something fixed, you, you let me know. Amen. Amen. Um, they've never let me sing a solo. <laughs> There's reasons for that. But I have a daughter in our church who married a, a fellow who, uh, that has a music background, and uh, their daughter has music background, so I enjoy listening to them. But uh, if there was ever a solo, it would be probably on a Saturday morning and not a Sunday morning. <laughs> we have different talents. We, we, we work together. And, and so it was with the, the NTA as, as well. We, we could look at the, the uh, uh, idea of the pounds and, and the gifts and the talents that uh, was talked about over there in the gospel as in Luke 19 and, and the gifts that are given by the Spirit of God in Romans 14 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But let me just say here, as, as the clock on the wall does not lie, uh, that as the NTA is, is helpful to the local church, so does the local church need to be helpful to the NTA. And, and so the first is prayer. Are we on your missionary prayer list? Now that becomes a rather interesting question. Uh, I, I remember so vividly saying that to a church, and they said, yes, you are. And then before I left, they said, no, you're not. <laughs> uh, that's why I mentioned it, okay? <laughs> are we part of your missionary outreach prayer list? So we need, we need your prayers, just like any other missionary needs your prayers. It's just like any other association or organization that you work with needs your prayers. Prayers of God's people uh, cannot be substituted for. So vital, so important. Secondly, we encourage your pastor to participate, and you're welcome to participate. Uh, as, as I get on a DVD, it, this is not a pastor's uh, exclusive uh, fellowship or association. We encourage lay people to come. And uh, sometimes I, I know the pastor just can't get away, but if there's someone else in the church who can and they would like to represent the church, praise the Lord. We do have a number of lay folks, as we say, come and uh, uh, enjoy the meetings. This, the meeting this year is a little different. It's in two weeks. It's June 11th through the 13th. And uh, uh, the NTA, uh, in part, was started out of the old fundamental fellowship that was within the Conservative Baptist Association. It was then called the Conservative Baptist Fellowship. And a number of those pastors like Clearwater, Cedar Home, uh, Madison, uh, Van Gildren, uh, a number of them, their churches were in the Conservative Baptist uh, Association, but they were also part of the Fundamental Baptist Fellowship that it was called back then, or Conservative Baptist Fellowship. And, and it was those pastors who really uh, were the initiative, and they finally said, okay, we've got to start over. We have tried for years to make things work, and they're not working, so we're going to start over. So this year, uh, it's, it was uh, decided that the Fundamental Baptist Fellowship International, which is a pastor's fellowship, 
uh, would join with the NTA, which is a local church association, and we have found that there's enough differences there that we will each keep our own identity, uh, but we're sharing the, the meeting time down at uh, Watertown, Wisconsin, on the campus of uh, Maranatha Baptist University, as well as uh, Calvary Baptist Church uh, in Watertown. So it's a, it's a unique meeting. So if somebody comes down there, uh, you're not going to really get the, the flavor of the NTA. Uh, but uh, Lord willing, uh, next year, I think we're going to be up in the Twin City area. And, and uh, so if you want to come and, and really see how it is from the inside out, we invite you to, to keep that. And, and uh, we give out the testimonies and, and uh, we keep information in, in, in there. So just, just that note about the annual meeting. Uh, prayer, encourage participation. And then like any mission agency, uh, we're dependent on the local church for support. Uh, we, we don't have uh, a special donor. Uh, we, we don't have uh, any wealthy uh, individuals out there. That's why I do it part-time. We have a part-time budget. But it works, and it has worked, and it will continue to work. But just to, to let you know about that. And uh, uh, maybe God will encourage. I, I don't know where Lighthouse is. I, I, I really don't know uh, what uh, the involvement is uh, financially, but it might be something uh, you want to think about. So I've come here today to help your pastor out. Uh, he, he wanted very much to be able to be at that graduation, and that's good. And to give the opportunity to share with you what the NTA is about. And uh, it's just like your local church, so keep that in mind. And again, if God has brought you here, and there's a concern on your heart, there's a decision you want to make, we encourage you to do so uh, as we close the service. Pastor Josh, are you here? Who closes the service? All right, let's have prayer, and then we'll turn it over to the brother here. Father, thank you that we can have this time. Thank you, Lord, that wherever we travel, God's people are the same, gracious and good. Love the Lord and love the Word of God. Faithful to the local church and its ministry. We thank you, Father, for this ministry and pray you'll continue to bless it and direct it. Give it, Lord, the increase and the St uh, stableness that it needs as it enters uh, year by year in, in, into uh, uh, new needs and, and uh, uh, new concerns. Thank you, Lord, for its faithfulness. And we pray, Father, you'll continue to bless it in Jesus' name. Amen.